Welcome to the Love or Leave the Law podcast with your hosts, Adam Ouellette and Casey Berman. All right, welcome to the Love or Leave the Law podcast. This is Adam with my partner in crime, Casey Berman. Today, we've got a really cool guest. She has so much experience in so many things, and we're really excited to talk to her. She's a fellow heart math certified trainer. She's You also have a heart math teams, right? Don't you have something like that, Franca? You know, heart math team. Uh, yeah, I mean, the activating heart of teams. Yes, you you have a certification in that. Yes, too. yes, I have a certification in that as well. Wow. Okay. So, I mean, we, we've got uh, the lady who's got so much information for us today. Let me give you a little bit of her bio. Her name is Dr. Franca Baroni. And she's an award-winning author, actress, intuitive trainer, and and she practices immigration law. She holds a doctorate in public international law and the master of laws and is admitted in New York, Washington State, and Switzerland. Wow. I think you're the first person I ever (laughs) met from is that admitted in Switzerland. And so for over 20 years, she's assisted individuals to maximizing situational awareness for greater well-being. She's offered several CLE programs to inspire greater resilience and heart intelligence in lawyering and meditation. She's a HeartMath certified resilience trainer, and she shares valuable knowledge that has helped thousands of professionals in many sectors around the globe to effectively build resilience in the midst of crisis. Her organization, Public Heart, fosters conscious leadership, citizenry, and deepening and a simple understanding of governance and law and art through entertainment, training, mentoring, and interacting interactive speaker events. She also was a contributor to the 2017 ABA publication, Lawyers Changemakers, which I've read and I have in my library. And she does a one-woman show, which we're going to talk a little bit about today, called Act in the Public Heart, A Lawyer's Journey. Tell us about that, Franca, to start. I mean, I'm so excited (laughs) to hear about that. Okay. You want to know about my my one-woman show? Yes. I decided, actually, in 2017, I, I, I decided to quit my full-time uh, lawyer or job and my boss thought I was crazy mm-hmm. because I said, I don't know why I'm quitting uh, but it just I just really listened to my heart and uh, and uh, just a few months later I had the idea to actually because I'm also an actress to create a one-woman show and I, I started writing and and um, fortunately I'm a pretty inspired writer so it comes through quickly and so, and so I created this one woman show, which is about my journey of awakening as a lawyer, awakening mm-hmm. into what I call the public heart. And, uh, and uh, so I, I, it's a very visceral show uh, because I believe the theater is a, it's a very effective tool for people to actually understand what heart is, right? Because mm-hmm. we, we often approach information, especially as lawyers, through our head. And so to me, uh, theater is not just about a passion and fun, but it also forces me to, to really drop in into my body and heart, which is what my work is all about. And so that's, that's what my one show, I've been performing it for a few years now, obviously it's a little bit on hold because of COVID, but um, it, it also inspires and instills the idea of what you know what what it means to be part of the public heart which uh i call it's like it's our conscious and heart intelligent collective body and i know i might be going really quickly into that but that's that's what the public heart is and so through theater i want to invite people to join me in living in that conscious heart intelligent collective body mm-hmm. rather than is in this dead machine uh of a crumbling democracy that we're we're in it and we've been in it for a while so so tell us why you wanted to be a lawyer so i wanted to be a lawyer for a very lame reason because tell us. i couldn't make up my mind of what i wanted to do and in switzerland um, you know where I'm from. I'm from the Italian part of Switzerland, and I uh, uh, studying law would really actually allow you to to do anything you want, and not just being a lawyer. And that was very fascinating, fascinating to me. I always been a multidisciplinarian throughout school. I always loved to do a bunch of different things, and so and so that was very suitable and then when i and i didn't really even know what law was when i signed up for law 
and 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 in that, I, I you know, obviously after I signed up, I I developed this passion for it, and uh, and to me, it was really the the desire of making a meaningful difference in the collective. And I felt as a lawyer, I could have a deeper impact. Also, obviously a, a call, a deep call for, for a better world world and, and justice. And I'm also really fascinated about the awakening and transformative power of conflict uh, for each of us. And so I, I felt that, you know, being a lawyer would, how people access conflict, which is inherent to life in a, in a, you know, in a more effective way and uh, to, to access inner peace. So, so that's what, why I became a lawyer. I very soon actually uh, went on an unconventional path. Um, I, I, I was early on, Find it every time that I was achieving or achieving my goal, right? A new degree, a new new achievement, academic achievement. I still felt like a little bit of a a, a, a sensation of incompleteness. There was something that was missing, and uh, and I never and then you know I didn't know about heart or anything, right? right. But so right. in time, I I I just I just know I could feel that hole in there uh, that no matter no matter how many degrees I had, there was something that even in the legal system felt deeply unsatisfying. And so I went into that, that quest uh, and, uh, and I, I talk, a lot, I share about that obviously a lot more in most of my one woman show and really discovered heart and went on this, on this journey of questioning our, the foundations of our legal system because I recognized no matter how sophisticated it is, we're always chasing our tail and we're just dwelling on the surface. So I was interested in something much deeper. So. so tell us about the kind of law you practice over the last 20 years. Yes, I have been practicing immigration law and, uh, and um, yeah, with all the, <laughs> the changes, it's a, it's a field of law that is definitely pretty austere and, <laughs> and doesn't allow for for a lot of um, uh, spaciousness and negotiation because, you know, you're dealing with the government. And, uh, and so, but it even, even within immigration law, I have been able to apply and experience um, the power of heart and, and, a, and, a, and practice in a way that is meaningful to, to to myself and 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 you know obviously able to to support others. So uh, no matter the field of law, I I feel we can bring in the 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 power of heart, uh, mm-hmm. uh, no matter where we go. So, well, Franca, you know we talked about this earlier, but when immigration law, even though it is very statutory and there's obviously limits and it's circumscribed, I mean it is. I mean there's such a human element. And it is so emotional. And so I can, I can see how the power of the heart, while there may not be much creativity with what the law is, what the law is, but I can see so much over the heart comes into play in, in managing the clients, managing the emotions, finding a unique argument. I mean, there must have been a lot of room for it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and it's, you know, it's a field of law where, you know, you deal with a lot of trauma and, you know, compelling stories and there's so much at stake for, 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 for the clients. And so uh, it's certainly, it's, it's very suitable to that, but to, to, you know, bring in more heart and much needed. And I really wanted to make the point that no matter what field of law we're in, we can win include that. I was recently speaking to a, a group of lawyers that you know was speaking about resilience and the importance of heart. Maybe we can talk a bit more about this in our in our time together. And they were saying, well, we are being trained actually to to foster like dysfunction, right, in our clients, and we're in this win and lose paradigm. And so, how can I bring in heart, which heart is not about win and lose? <laughs> it's it, the, the heart. Uh, it knows that it's a very ineffective 
paradigm way of looking, and that is so deeply entrenched in how we understand law. And I think what we really need to understand is that that we can we can even in an adversarial system we can still bring a heart because we're 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 supporting not only the quality of the well-being of the lawyers themselves, uh, but also support the the client we represent in in being more what we call more coherent and more resilient and more in their hearts, which provides for better outcomes, even in an adversarial system. And so this is really about beating or or really going underneath a deeply ingrained belief that just the battle of right and wrong is what brings me justice, right? And that's what the big gift of learning what hard really is. And it's not this fluffy romantic comedy or you know, you know, soft, softness feeling. And there's so much resistance in my lawyers, so even the, the F word, right? <laughs> it's the feeling word. It's like don't bring up the feeling word. And uh, but it's so essential uh, in in it has so many ripple effects. And as you know, as you guys know so well, there's so many lawyers that move out of their out of their profession. Uh, there's a lot of mental health issues. There's a lot of discontent in the profession because we're being asked to do something that is not natural <laughs> to our body. And so I really want to, my part of my goal is really to inspire lawyers uh, to, to, understand that there is a win-win here where you can still practice law in a way that is satisfying, uh, not just to yourself, but also to those around you. And with that, also support the system. So Franca, we're both certified trainers with HeartMath. Tell us more about resilience and coherence and what it's done for you as a lawyer. Yes. I mean, like, you know, I loved HeartMath. I discovered it in I mean, I became a trainer in 2017, which is actually fairly late in my journey. I've, I think, I've naturally <laughs> discovered the heart on my own and all they can do. And even actually wrote a book that we could talk about later, which is all based on hard wisdom way before I found out about hard math. What I love about hard math is that, that uh, they have researched what the heart does physiologically. And I think especially for us as lawyers, we need to know why hard matters. And having the science is a great backup uh, for, for us to learn to access our feelings and understand why we need to access our feeling in a way that is, is supporting our well-being and the one of our clients and, 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 and the legal system. So... What I love about hard math, you know, is all the idea of coherence. Uh, coherence is this highly efficient physiological state, right, where all our body function are synchronized, and um, and that state of coherence is uh, we 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 are able to to access that at will. Uh, so we have this, you know, I think we're the only species that actually has the ability to self-regulate at will. And so this is a great treasure we've been sitting on. And, uh, and uh, I think that's very relevant because if we as lawyers learn through these techniques that the Heart Math Institute, you know, has developed and there's this whole scientific protocol and these techniques have are proven to work, we're able to enter the state of coherence. Not only our body are healthier, but also in the way we practice <coughs> law we're able to be with our client in this more coherent and highly efficient synchronized space with our clients, less obstacles, less brains. Even in our cases, we're able to access the intuition that comes, you know, by being in, our, in a coherent state, we have access to solutions that just our brain alone cannot even figure it out. So there's so many Advantage and what I love about the hard system, hard math system that are practical, easy, on the go tools that we can do any moment. They're not going to land on a to do list that we have to find self care time. No, we're doing, we're practicing as we speak and in the midst of pressure because that's when 
those those you know that's when the techniques are used and it's why the hard math system is used by first responders police military because they don't have time to stop so i think to me um this has so many beautiful application for the legal system and my 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 work really throughout the years has to be able to foster understand what this coherence looks like and also on a collective level imagine if we learn in our collective body to enter this highly efficient synchronized state how much better the system our society would work but we're all all we're, we're just in this incoherent state where we're very inefficient right we are basically driving every day with one foot on the brake and one foot on the accelerator at the same time every single day individually and collectively because of all the the, the thinking and the polarization and blame and the projection and the anxiety and hopelessness and so no wonder we're seeing the world we're seeing <laughs> but there's an easy answer and this is what i love about what I do, what you guys are doing, what we're up to is to share that there's really easy tools to bring us back into balance. It's not this great philosophical model that we have to hire a tons of committees to figure out the strategy, right? Because there's so much money gets spent in strategies and this model and that model. <laughs> it's more very simple. Yeah, and for me, Years ago, when I, I found the HeartMath book by Doc Children, and I read it probably in 2007, and I was going through a, a, a split of my law firm. My law partner and I have 10 years. We're going through a split. The real estate market had tanked. And luckily, that book came to me like fell off the shelf, right? And, and it taught me to look at life differently. It taught me that the heart has its own consciousness. It's got its own awareness. It's got its own neural cells. And we talked a little bit about this on one of our previous episodes with Ritu, but ultimately the heart has up to 40,000 neural cells, neural yeah. type cells in it. And then and heart math and their research and all kinds of other science organizations has shown that the heart has its own energy center and they've been able to see it, measure it. And so for me, when I was learning to, to link up the heart and the brain, which is what heart math calls coherence, you put yourself in such a different state and stress is neutralized. I mean, you you don't get upset anymore. You don't react. You respond. I mean, it's just so powerful and it's science-based. This is one of the reasons I was drawn to it because of the left brain aspects, even though I was yeah. exploring right brain stuff for a long, long time. But I think that's why law lawyers will love it and gravitate to it and you know go to your workshops on it. I know you have a four-hour heart math workshop that you do live. And I think this is one of the reasons why Heart math is going to resonate so deeply with lawyers because it's not the woo-woo spirituality. This is 300 scientific studies, and this is stuff that NASA, NASA has been trained in, U.S. Army, the military, Cedar Sinai. I mean, they've got a list of clientele that will water your eyes. And so Absolutely. this stuff works. And, you know, and you can use it. I mean, I use it. You go, you know, you prepare before meetings, before you go to court, you prepare before difficult negotiations. I mean, you can you can use those techniques not just to prepare yourself for what's coming up in your day as a lawyer, but also again when you have a quick upset, we're still are human, right? So we get stressed out, and so you can use this technique to come back quickly into a state of coherence, and then you know, and also then to sustain it throughout the day. So there's a lot of applications uh, for for lawyers, and I mean, I I you know when I go to court, I mean I. I I put myself and actually um, by putting myself and radiating my, my state of coherence through the measurable electromagnetic field of the heart, I extended the electromagnetic field of the heart into the courtroom. And I have seen shift in the, the behavior of the judges. They were pretty dramatic. So I, I, I'm, I've been often able to really obtain some good results in even with, with immigration officers that, that, you know, those interviews can be really challenging and 
you know, I come in, I practice the tools in advance, I practice them while in the meeting, and uh, and it and it also you deal with less problems. And I hear colleagues they're always complaining about oh, and they did that and they did that and the time and all these issues they're having, and I don't even experience them as much anymore. And I always say, hard math and you know all the other things I offer. It's not about changing what we're doing, you know, advocating for our clients and, you know, everything we need to do as lawyers, but we're changing the how we're doing. And in changing the how we're doing it, the what typically changes in our favor. I mean, that's just like, it's not woo-woo. It's just like, it's just experience. I've experienced it for 20 years and I can guarantee that's what, how, how it happens. Yeah, I mean, I think it's the change in your beingness, right? I mean, they've been able to see that the the heart radiates this aura, this energy field, six feet. And so when you ask the scientists at HeartMath, is it only six feet? And they said, this is all that our our, um, tools can measure, six feet. So when you're talking about changing the courtroom based on being coherent, they've shown it in studies that it changes the energy around you. It's because you're emanating this different energy and there are little tools that HeartMath has. You can find on Amazon called the M-Wave. You can connect it to your phone, Bluetooth, low, low rate Bluetooth, and you can literally see your heart rate in real time as you're practicing some of these techniques go from incoherent to coherent. And it's so funny when I, I first got one of these machines 12 years ago, 10 years ago, something to that effect, and there was no smartphones out yet. So this is this little blue machine and it's got these lights. And I remember first practicing with some of the techniques. And when you're in red, you're not coherent. And so I was getting myself to blue, which is right. You're right there. You're right on the verge. You're in coherence. And then green, you're there. You're in coherence. There's varying levels of coherence. And it's so funny. When I was staying in the the technique, in in the breathing technique, in the the, uh, coherent pattern, it would stay green. But as soon as my mind wandered, boom it would drop into red, like instantaneous. So this is something you can have one of these M waves. We'll put a link down below. You can have an M wave, practice some of the techniques and see real time if you're coherent or not. And part of Franco, what you were saying is so powerful. When you're in that coherent state, you learn how to stay in that state. And as you practice with it, and there's so much power in that state. I mean, when you're in a coherent state, your whole being is different, right? And so you're changing the courtroom, but also the people around you. And not to say that, you know, if you're in coherence, you're going to win all your arguments in court. No, case, right? <laughs> but, you know, and but what, you know, what science those has shown, you know, hard math and other scientists have shown that this, you know, the influence we have on others is actually real. It's because the electromagnetic field, and by the way, it's not the aura, right? The aura is right. more like, it's a measurable field. And this, and this field actually, uh, a coherent field will have an impact on the field and the nervous system of those around us. So they have actually measured that, yes. that mm-hmm. our state of coherence supports those around us to enter also a state mm-hmm. of coherence without even opening our mouth. We don't have to say anything. And this is why I also see a lot of application in my passion for us as citizens to enter a state of coherence because there's so much talk about different belief system, right? Different version of what reality is, which is such a amplification of our dysfunctional brain. When we enter the level of the heart, we don't have to argue. (laughs) We just have to learn how to be in the state of coherence which that in a way naturally will start to change our thinking and the way we behave and the way we respond. We're not trying to force in a new way of thinking and belief. So we can bypass our belief system in a way to actually connect. And that has a lot of power in everything we do. The body puts out a troidal field, which is a a, a circular pattern of energy, but the heart has one too. So you can see what it looks like, that energy field that they can measure up to six feet away from the body. It's, it's very, very powerful. And, and so 
Um, beautiful. I mean, heart math, I, I was a seeker still am, and it's the best thing I've ever found. And, and lawyers need this desperately. The point you made about uh, having a foot on the accelerator and one on the brake. And that's great imagery that you have there. And, and I would just last week I was dealing with, with, you know, two steps forward, 1.9 steps back. And I just being in this middle state and, and so many of us are there, whether we're lawyers or doing something else, or whether it's in our personal life or whether it's our country at a, on a political level or whatever. And, and I just, I really like that imagery and the fact that heart math and what you can do here. I mean, talk about a superpower, talk about, imagine taking your foot off the brake and pressing more on the gas. I mean, it, and it's almost like a belief system that we like people can't even comprehend accelerating in a good way. And this is actually, a, a, I don't want to take credit for that image because this is in the, in the heart resilience training, heart math training. This is what we're, it's a way to explain actually what happens to the branches of our nervous system, right? Yeah. We have two branches in our nervous system. And when we're in a state of incoherence, we are driving our car or those the gas, one foot on the gas and one on the pedal at the same time. And that creates a lot of wear and tear on that car. And yeah. we don't yeah. get very fast to destination. That's what happens physiologically in the nervous system because the nervous system regulates 90% of our body functions. So that's what happens in our body. Now, when we are in a state of, thing of coherence, we learn that smooth ride, right? When do we give gas? When do we break? And so we get very far. And this is same thing collectively. That's where, where we are, right? So, so yes, I think it's a powerful imagery that's a good reminder for, for us to, to, okay, is that what I really want to do to myself right now? <laughs> I had the foot on the pedal and the gas for 10 years, and it, I got sick many, many times. Migraine, headaches, adrenal exhaustion, all these things. And we wonder why at the end of the day, when we're lawyers and sometimes our days are 10, 12, 15 hours, like mine used to be back in the day, why we get so tired. But resilience really is keeping that battery charged and it doesn't wear down. So the beginning of the day, you have as much energy as you do at the end of the day. And so, you know, I used to get to the point where when I was resilient and was practicing, and I do still practice this, but newly practicing it, I would sit there at six o'clock and say, I have to stop working because it, I'm done for the day, even though I wasn't tired or exhausted like I used to be. And it was really sad. I would wake up in the mornings and I was as tired as I was when I went to bed, not after heart math, right? Not after the techniques and uh, the various tools yes. that we teach. I, 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 I do, you know, when I work also, you know, co coach clients and, and uh, you know, notable difference in the quality of sleep. I mean, that also, it's a typical example when we are you know, in an incoherent state, we create all those stress hormones that remain in our system for many hours and then impact our sleep. So there's improvements on the sleep. Yes. And the improvements on the quality of living. I mean, I have experienced, I mean, I, you know, I'm over 50 and I, I have made like, you know, I'm on my one woman show, I'm tumbling on the stage and I'm so dynamic and full of life. And I say, like, well, how do you do that? And so, so it is really, I think it's really tapping into a fountain of youth of like of uh, of the ability of remain vital. And you were saying about the batteries, right? The beauty about the hard math techniques is not that we just learn to fill the batteries, but we're actually also learning to increase the size of our batteries. Yes. There you go. It's and then so we're not ever limited to the amount of energy we have been born with no life experience no trauma no no level of burnout or nothing that we i mean i've gone through a severe adrenal burnout also years ago and uh and so i know firsthand why you know that doing these techniques and obviously i don't credit everything to hard math i mean i have a, a, a rich i mean i have a bunch of other tools that i do and and you know I, and 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 re, in the resources that I I really do know that we can really recover and move move uh, uh, beyond whatever we experience. And you're right, Adam. Burnout is a real thing for a lot of lawyers, and and uh, and it also my field of immigration law. You know, 
secondary PTSD. I mean, there's so much of that. And so these tools and in the days we're in are essential. And, and that's the beauty of the Harma system that it's easy, it's practical and easy to be integrated in, in our, in our, in our daily life because our nervous system are bombarded more, more and more with learning the self-regulation. We're learning to make a new inner pause that allows us to make a new choice. And I think in the times we're in that self-awareness, that ability to choose and activating that ability to choose rather than being this robots and go with the masses, wherever the masses shouts, you just go with it. To be able to unplug from that and stop and say, okay, I'm going to make a new choice right now. It's going to be more and more essential. Because a lot of what we're seeing today is a result of really have I just talked to this about in my, my book, we have really delegated our power. And with that, we have delegated the power we have disconnected from the sophisticated technology present in our body, in our physiology that opens up whole new worlds for all of us. And we have really forgotten how much power we actually have in influencing and 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 you know and and crafting the world around us, and that's where that you know from my, my website I talk about turning leadership from the inside out. It's really it's time to step up into our leadership, and uh, and resilience and resilience training will certainly help with that and waking up to the to how to do that, and and uh, and really realizing how much responsibility we have in using what we're being given because if we're not using those inner resources they will go dormant they will atrophy in time and we're already seeing that to a big degree so this is really the time to to wake up to those to those uh the brilliant power in inherent in our physiology well as they say if you don't use it you lose it it's exactly the same with those tools and techniques. So, so let, let's, you, I mean, you said it beautifully, but I, I want to talk about your book on governance. Tell us about that and who's, who should read it and what it's about. Everyone should read it. Well, yes, of course. <laughs> so, so the book, I, I uh, published it a, a decade ago and just in the introduction, it really kind of said what's going on right now. Uh, so uh, interesting. So, what this book is about is, uh, is setting up a, a, a new a blueprint uh, of, of a, a new way of looking at law, at looking at governance. Uh, basically, the, the, the structures and the principles that make uh, a society work and make our society evolve to the next level. And so it, it, it speaks about the essence is we have been really lost in our in our brain and with it's been disconnected from our heart. And with that, we have lost access, not just to self-regulate, but we have lost access to justice. We have lost access to to uh, um, to the balance, even with our environment, which is our very source of sustenance and while we're alive in the first place. So, um, you know, in that book, I'm. I'm Showing what the new collective agreements are of a of a of a more hard intelligence society, and it's really a book about self governance, uh, heart governance, <laughs> and a heart intelligence society, and and it describes, you know, what power means in that in that framework, what what freedom means, what what are what are um, you know, our values are, what 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 are the behaviors and. And what is our responsibility as citizens, and how we you know like what what a country is in a hard intelligent um, you know way of looking at society. So so I you know from what I'm told, I mean it's really like a really important book because it brings together 
um, the, at the very roots of what, what, how society needs to, where, where we have to move into as a society. And uh, it's a foundational book. And so the ideal reader are people that are, are realizing uh, that we're at a dead end and that we need a, a different way of looking at so so people that are not attached to what the way they're thinking that are open to a, a radical, fresh approach that are maybe not too much in their heads. Uh, I think this is a book that it's best if you actually not try to analyze it, but really like breathe with it. Open, <laughs> it, open up to it, right? It was, it was, you know, written through the intelligence of my heart. So it's not like a, it's not like a, it's, it's not a how to book. I do one, two, three, four, because that's really left to each of our own wisdom on how to act each moment. But it gives you the key ingredients on how to enter this conscious living body that is the public heart, that is, is alive and happening. And it's really the key for our survival i think as a species and uh and so that's that's what the book is i'm really you know excited about that um and uh and obviously the show is also a good way to learn more about that casey you have any questions i i have a ton i i think you know for me when you talk about the you know not to not the how to something that came to mind for me was how mechanical we are and whether we want to learn to do something new or whether play guitar or whether and and so there there's definitely form and there are definitely best practices and things that you need to do but i've fallen in this trap a lot where as i'm trying to learn something i think i'm fully focused on the mechanical just hey teacher tell me where do i put my fingers right where do i how do i do this and that's definitely part of it but i like how your book and what you stressed here is is understanding what's inside and I think many people, particularly attorneys, but I think many people in general will say, okay, great. Now, what advice is that to look inside? But we really have it inside of us and, and meditating or doing like the meditate, the heart math, do it like you did before the show that, that we started. Um, I just think pausing and doing everything that, that we're talking about here, they, you, you just trust. You trust in the silence. You trust in your heart. You trust in, in it coming to you. So for everyone listening, there's definitely a mechanical part to it. There definitely is a how to sure. But I really, really like Franca, how your book is stressing that that's not a hundred percent of the picture, but rather you, you sort of fill in the how to steps with everything that's personal to us. So. And you know, and the how to, in a way, I mean, a lot of the hard math system, those techniques, you know, those trainings, I mean, are certainly a way of the how to move, into the consciousness of the public heart. And, and so, and so there, there is a how to, but it's really, that's part we've been trapped into that the idea that it's on doing, doing, doing that where our solutions come and we enter a state of our being, we can access solutions that are really not available when we're trapped in our head. And, uh, and because in this paradigm of the head, we typically create, solutions that create even more problems right so in the in the space of the heart which is foreign for i mean i don't know what it's like oh heart it's like so that's where it takes courage it takes a lot of courage of letting go of what we think we know and that is really a key ingredient yeah because mm -hmm. our brain is always because all it does is our brain is really a computer that's looking for familiar right. data. Right. Our brain is always looking for, oh, for what I already know. And now we have this gigantic brain in our internet and Google and all that, right? What we have to learn is to really surrender to that craving, that addiction to to knowing and really being that fresh mindset. Yeah. And I invite for anyone that wants to do the trainings uh, uh, with me, I you know, offer resilience training and I coaching and all, you know, anything I offer, my, my invitation 
come in with a genuinely fresh mindset because that is actually what allows you to tap into the power of the heart. And and the word you said there, courage, courage is huge. I heard a quote which said, you know, your life expands or contracts in relation to the amount of courage you have. And yes. it is a step. It's a threshold step there. And someone I work with and in, in, in an, an attorney coaching the he wrote this to me just a few days ago about how once he had the courage to reach out for jobs and do things, things are just falling into place. For example, he on LinkedIn, he's looking to leave the law on LinkedIn, email, uh, LinkedIn messaged a COO, a C-suite of a company with a cold message. They don't know each other. She got back to him a few hours later, said, I can't do an informational interview this week, but I'm, I can do it next week. By the way, here's my talent acquisition person. They have a call, I think Monday for 15 minutes. Totally cold. And it's just this this level of courage. So, you know, we've talked a lot about courage and heart. And I just I just want everyone to realize, and Franca, you probably have a ton of examples. There are real life examples, like you mentioned in court, where this works. <laughs> it works. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And courage, right, has the word heart in it. So <laughs> that that's that's and it's really relinquishing control. And then we can let life self-organize. And that's all it is, is for us to get out of the way. <laughs> and I heard, you know, to go back and, and oh, this, I would talk for hours, but getting out of the way, I've always tried to understand what that is. And getting out of the way, I read somewhere, was thinking conflicting thoughts. And getting, you know, multiple exclusive, pedal on the gas, pedal on the accelerator, right? And, and when I heard that phrase, I finally understood what that term getting out of the way is is I'm thinking these mutually exclusive thoughts, which is like you just said earlier, the imagery of, of having your foot on both pedals. So it's, it's, you connect the dots that way and it just, it just opens up for you. Perfect, perfect. So Franca can be found at publicheart.org. We'll put it on the screen. We'll put it down below. Franca, thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing with the audience uh, how to live from the heart, how to practice from the heart. Reach out to Franca. We're going to put her email down there as well, publicheart11 at gmail. Uh, if you have any interest in working with her, she does heart math workshops, live ones. Uh, she, I'm looking forward to seeing her one woman show. I'm not sure if you're going to do it on Zoom or not. I couldn't remember. I, I didn't hear you when you talked before the show. If you're going to do it on Zoom, are you going to do that on Zoom or no? I'm going to do uh, my yes. I'm going to do a part of it on, on Zoom. Yeah, man, I'm so excited to see that. But thank you for the work you do in the world. Thank you for being here with us and sharing your knowledge. We really appreciate it. Well, the appreciation goes both ways. Thank you for all you're doing for the field and for who you are and for inviting me today. Thank you. All right, everybody. We appreciate your time and we hope you learned something. If you got any questions for Franca or us, feel free to email any of us. We're here to help and uh, have yourself a great day. <laughs>